Hey everybody, welcome back. I hope everybody's doing well today. So in this video, and actually in this next kind of series of videos, I want to try and make a new flexible camera arm for the camera, which is mounted to the tripod at the moment, and taking this video. And as some of you may know, I have been using one of these. This is a 11-inch um, magic arm device with a clamp and a camera mount in, and you can just kind of make this do almost anything. And this clamp, this articulated clamp here, is really, really nice. And, um, and that's a $15 knockoff, so you can imagine how good the real product is at $150. Bucks. But sometimes it's just not long enough. I can't get it where I need it. There's nothing to clamp it to close enough. Things like that, or I need it high, and things like that. So what I want to try and do is create a three foot long and maybe, yeah, I think three foot's going to be about what I'm going to do. Camera arm, flexible camera arm that will have a clamp like that and can clamp on everything. So, recently I was watching a, uh, an updated video Adam Savage did over at Tested where he made a flexible light arm out of a material called Lockline. Now, if you've ever been in a machine shop and you've ever seen a, a milling lathe something like that that has um, a coolant line where you can position over the part you're, you're, you're cutting. That's the material that you use that articulated arm that's kind of, you know, blobby looking. That's <laughs> blobby looking probably isn't the best word. Jointed in many, lots of, lots of short joints. That's lock line. And you can go out and buy the stuff. And you got to excuse me, I got a print going on here. This is actually a couple of the parts I'm talking about. I'm going to be talking about it in this video. And my spool of filament is tangling. So every now and again, I got to reach over and free it or it'll yank it off. Oh, it just finished. I'm going to get two more started right away though. Anyway, this material is called lock line. And you snap the pieces together and you can make it as long as you want. Now, it will not support a lot of weight on its own. So what Adam Savage did was he put some quarter inch, bendable quarter inch wire inside that they call armature wire that artists use for sculpting and things like that to hold arms and things up, you know, so that they don't break. And it's cheap. It's like a buck a foot or so, buck twenty a foot, something along those lines. Also, I have some, I have some of this bendable aluminum fuel line and, um, I've got way more than I'll ever use probably for the rest of my life because of the amount I had to buy. I've got quarter inch and three eighths. Now, it's pretty darn stiff. It's way stiffer than armature wire, so it may turn out to be too stiff. So, in this series of videos, I'm going to start with making that ball and shoulder socket in Fusion 360 that looks like line lock or lock line. Sorry. If you go to Thingiverse, you can see lots of different, lots of different copies of Lockline on Thingiverse. I'm guessing they all probably work, but you know, you get STL files, and I like to have control over what I do. If something I decide I want to sell, I want to be able to sell it without having to ask somebody else's permission or having to give them royalties. Not that I plan on selling this, but um, also modifying STL sucks. I mean, I don't know any nice way to say it other than it sucks. So I like I like having the, the actual CAD file so that I can manipulate it, I can change it, I can turn it into whatever I want. So I like that. Plus, you know what? Baking, making, designing and making new things in Fusion 360, to me, I enjoy the process. I learned something new about Fusion 360 with almost everything I make in it, and that was true of this one this time as well. So, with that being said, let's pop over to Fusion 360 and let's take a look. Okay, so here we are over in Fusion 360 and forgive the sound of the printer in the background and for me occasionally maybe having to go and free that tangled filament up. So instead of making you guys sit through 45 minutes or an hour of me stumbling and bumbling through Fusion 360 to figure out how I want to design something, what works and what doesn't, and the mistakes I make, I thought what I would do is start with a finished product and walk you through the steps because my Fusion 360 videos get less views than any other kind of video that I do. So I still want to show it to you, but I'm going to try and do it in a short period of time. So the part is already made. If you look down here at the bottom where my mouse pointer is, you can see that 
there's a full history so the first thing I did to make this ball and shoulder socket and you'll see some people on Thingiverse if you look at the the lock line products on Thingiverse some people have used a triangular profile I just went with a round ball and socket it seemed like the easiest and I think it would probably look the best I'm trying to get it to look like a, a camera arm not a um not a T-Rex's backbone, although that would be cool, come to think of it. But anyway, first thing I did was I came up to Create, and I came to Sphere. I picked a plane to make the sphere on, and I'm going to move over and show you the sphere I created. This is a 30 millimeter sphere. It's a solid sphere. Next thing I did was come up to Modify and Shell, and I it asked me what I want to shell. I picked my sphere. It asked me how thick I want the walls. I told it three millimeters. And then that's what we're looking for here. Now notice you can't see it because it's a solid on the outside sphere with the hollow in the middle. But what I can do is I can come to analysis and I can turn on my section analysis. And to get that, come up to inspect and section analysis and pick a plane to make the cut on. And then it will be up here in your browser on the left so there it is there so you can see the um the 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 um shell did work so let's turn off the analysis for now we'll come back to it and look at it as we go next thing i did was because a sphere ain't going to do me any good on its own i created an offset plane and let me show you that offset plane okay there's my offset plane and to get that you come to construct an offset plane it'll ask you what plane you want to offset and then it will ask you how far you want to offset it. it you can drag it around too so next thing I did was I created a sketch on that offset plane let's take a quick look at that sketch and in this sketch I just created a center point circle I just drug it out to well beyond the limits of the sphere because all I'm going to use it for is to cut the top off of this sphere so let's finish the sketch and let's close the plane and when I drug that, when I hit E to extrude on that center line circle and drag it up to cut, this is what I got. Now, I want both sides like this. So the next thing I did was I came up to my create. Whoops, not that. Let's get rid of that. I came to create and then to mirror. And when I hit mirror, it says, what do you want to mirror? I picked this extrusion down here and it asked for a plane. And I picked the, the flat plane that's in the center and told it OK. And then I got that. So now I have my ball socket. Next thing I did was I need some distance in between the ball and the shoulder. Now, I could have made this anything I wanted, but um, I want this fairly short and fairly fairly bendable so I didn't want to put like four or five inches in between here although I could have if I'd wanted to and you know you might want to do that on certain segments of it but for right now we're just making the base part so what I did was I highlighted this part by clicking on it I hit E to extrude and I extruded this up 15 millimeters and that's what you're seeing there next thing I did after that was I created yet another offset plane because I need my I need let me zoom out I need my my socket up here so I need another sphere for my socket so I created this offset plane and had I made had, had I made the sphere right on this surface the center of the sphere would be on that surface which is going to do me no good so I need my sphere to be up so how I did this and you know I'm sure you can use use it doing mathematics but to me it was just too quick to do it this way i created my offset plane up here i put the sphere on it and then i went into the, the properties of the offset plane and i kept changing how far up it was until it sat exactly where i wanted it you math guys you might want to do it the other way but that's fine so let me hide that plane and let me expose my next create a sphere nope, come on there's the next step there's the sphere all i did was once again go up to create create a sphere and then I created it on that plane so and then I lowered the plane down until I got the sphere where I wanted it so my next step was pretty simple I shelled my upper sphere and let's go back to analysis and um, there is what I have now let me go free that spool filament up a little bit all right there we go that should be okay for another few minutes 
And but you'll notice now that I have a wall right in here. That wall needs to go away. So the next thing I did, let me close off the um, let me close off the analysis. So the next thing I did was I created a sketch and I created a sketch down on this surface. Let's take a look at that sketch. Oh, I created a sketch down on this surface and I made a center circle from this center line out to my in my inner wall there. And then I hit E to extrude on that circle and I just free handed drug it up until I was somewhere in the center of this hollow sphere. Let's go back to our analysis and there we go. So now I have now I'm hollow. I have my hole all the way up through here. So next thing I'm going to do, I got to cut the top of this off. Just like I cut the bottom and the top of the lower one off. So let me um, turn the analysis back off once again. And so to do that, I created one more offset plane. Let me show it to you. There it is up there. It is 15. Uh, if I remember right, it's 15 millimeters from the center of there, but it can be anything you want that works. I might have adjusted it till I felt that I got the cut I wanted. And then on that plane, I made another sketch and let's take a look at it. And you'll see all I did was make another freehand center point circle. And then I hit, I hit E to extrude on this and I cut it straight up and that cut me out. That cut out the top of that sphere. So let me expose that. And there you go. So there's my ball and socket. Let me hide that plane. There's my ball and socket. And you'll see some on Thingiverse just like this or not just like this, but similar to this. And you're just supposed to f have two of these or more than two, of course, but you just shove the part down here into the part up here. And um, let me tell you something. If you have it so that this is a snug fit into that, you're going to bust this. You're either going to have to put this in hot water or use a heat gun in order to force this in. And um, I don't know about your luck with that kind of thing, but I'll wind up deforming this. I'll wind up accordioning it or something or other. And I'll wreck it. So I didn't want that. So the next thing I did was I created another sketch. This time I created it on the very top surface of this. Let's take a look at that sketch. And I made two center point rectangles, three millimeters wide in a cross or an X pattern. I highlighted them. I highlighted all the different pieces of them because they're they're segmented because of the different lines they they pass through. I highlighted all of it and I used E to extrude and I cut them down an amount that I thought would be appropriate. I think I cut them down 20 millimeters and now that gives my filament, my part, a little bit of flex. Since I'm going to be using PETG, you might get away with PLA for this, but PLA don't have a lot of flex to it, and PETG does. I may have mentioned it, but if you saw my video where I made the cover for my air conditioning in the back, it had clips on it. The PLA clips broke every time. The PETG ones did not once I reinforced them a bit. They had just enough give to let them move and survive. So one more thing to do and i'm going to fill it these inside edges all four of them and you'll see i did it here with the very last step what that does is two things once again it makes it a little easier to force our ball in and gives it kind of a head start it doesn't have to spread it quite as far apart also by filleting or chamfering that edge I'm going to get a little bit more of an angle to it when I bend it because that edge will be gone not to hit. It may only be a couple of degrees, but hey, you know what? I'm already going to do it to make it easier to get the ball in. So I might as well have it there for the extra angle I'll get from it too. So that's it. That's my part. I have several test pieces I have printed. I have not printed the final piece yet. Those are the ones that are still on the printer and going. At least I hope what is going to be the final piece. And, but I'm going to show you some of my test parts that aren't exactly perfect. And um, yeah, you can have a look at it and see if you like it or see if you want to do it on your own or see if you just want to go out to um, the Thingiverse and download one of theirs or just blow 30 or 40 bucks and buy the real lock line. Okay, I'm holding the camera in my hand, so forgive me if it shakes a little bit. Here is what I've done so far. And you can see these, the ones here, and these are all slightly different. 
I just plugged them all together to make them easier to keep track of so they don't go walk about. The ones down here are just a little bit too loose and floppy and this one down here is getting pretty close. Now also I printed these on Cura because I had a PETG profile in it and um, I have never had really nice luck with PETG but um, you see I've got two printing down here and these I sliced on Prusa Slicer and I don't know if you can tell it, but they look considerably smoother and nicer. And I have made a few small tweaks in these that I did not do on these. So uh, this is what I got in mind. Oh, and I have this. And this is not armature wire. Sorry about that. This is, um, this is bendable aluminum fuel line. And um, as you can see, it's hollow. I have some 3 8 and I have some quarter inch. While it is bendable, as you can see, it is really stiff. So I think that's going to be too stiff. So I have some of the, the real artist armature wire coming. It's cheap. A 10 foot length is like 12 or 15 bucks. So um, that's more than enough for this little project. So that's it for this time. This is where I'm headed. I think I'm going to try and make this about three feet long. I'm going to make ends that fit in with that super nice clamp that's on the magic arm. I'll probably even pick up another one of those clamps because they are really nice. They clamp to almost anything that will fit in the jaws. And then I'll make an end that fits on the, um, the camera. And then hopefully if I can tweak the amount of tension that I get in everything, I will have a really nice bendable arm camera mount. So that's it for this time. In the next video we'll try putting this together. And then the video after that, we'll make ends and all that, and we'll put the whole thing together. And we'll see if I knew what I was thinking, if, I'm, if I got anywhere close to what I was looking for. So, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, please ask them below and all that stuff. And I will catch you guys the next time. Bye for now.